Ethos for Academic Writing. I'm Dr. James Patterson. Ethos is an appeal to ethics. It is the strategy by where the person presenting the argument takes time to persuade the audience and or reader that she or he is a credible and ethical person. One of the key areas in which we can influence our audiences or our readers is through the careful selection and integration of research materials into our writing. However, ethics extends to the correct attribution and correct documentation of our sources as well. Let's begin by looking at the selection of research sources. The online writing lab, OWL, at Purdue University provides a list of questions to ask about the sources you wish to use in your argumentative writing. Question number one, who is the author? If a magazine or a website or blog does not provide the full name and credentials of the author, you should avoid using the information. The source isn't credible because the audience and or reader has no way to judge the expertise and knowledge of the author. Question number two, how recent is the source? Now the answer to this question will depend on the expectations of your discipline. Those of us in the arts and humanities, we still use the works of authors dating back millennia. We still consider them valid sources because their ideas still have value in today's studies. However, in the sciences and in the social sciences, the most recent advances and studies tend to hold more value than works conducted even a decade or more in the past. As you prepare your papers for your university professors, ask to see what constitutes recency in your discipline. Question number three, what is the author's purpose? As we'll see in this course on argumentation, everyone has a bias. The more credible experts in the fields will acknowledge their bias. What is important is for the researcher to ask the question, what is the author's purpose? Even a source which is clearly written from an argumentative stance can have value as the author presents a claim and or proposition, supplies evidence, and provides reasoning to support her or his claim. Question number four, what types of sources does your audience and or reader value? This again will shift depending on your discipline of study. Those who conduct research in interdisciplinary studies sometimes have to recognize that the value of some sources as they're presented in one discipline have a different value in the interdiscipline that you're working in. For academic writing at the university, dictionaries and encyclopedia are not accepted as credible sources simply because the information they contain is considered common knowledge. Some professors will be very suspicious of information retrieved from a blog or a news posting that does not include the author's full name and credentials. Now let's talk about the integration of research materials. When the time comes to write your draft, you will want to make sure that your research does not become the paper. You are the author and the ideas presented in the paper must be yours. The dominant voice of the paper needs to be your voice. We bring in research materials to build credibility for our ideas, to present and verify evidence, and we can use an expert's reasoning as long as we credit the expert and use our own words in providing the link between the evidence and claim. In academic writing, quoted or paraphrased material is expected to be introduced with a signal phrase. A signal phrase simply lets the audience and or reader know that what follows is drawn from an outside source. Some students provide full and complete bibliographical information in their signal phrases and this is simply tiresome for the reader. The full and complete bibliographic information belongs in the bibliography at the end of the paper. A signal phrase, however, can provide the name of the author or authors. A reference to the title of the work should only be included in the signal phrase if you are using multiple sources from the same author in your paper. In academic writing, quoted or paraphrased material is expected to be followed 
with a parenthetical reference. In MLA documentation, the parenthetical note includes the last name of the author or authors and the page or paragraph number of the quoted or paraphrased material. In APA documentation, the parenthetical note includes the last name of the author and or authors and the year of publication. In both cases, the author needs to provide enough information in the signal phrase and in the parenthetical reference to guide the audience and or reader to the correct listing on the bibliographic information at the end of the paper. Here's an example number one. According to William Strunk, Jr., quote, the proper place in the sentence for the word or group of words that the writer desires to make most prominent is usually at the end. End quote. Parentheses, Strunk, Jr., page 26, close parentheses, period. The signal phrase is, according to William Strunk, Jr., the parenthetical reference is Strunk, Jr., page 26, in parentheses. Here's another example, example number two. According to McCrimmon, writing a research paper, then, is not just stringing together statements from books and magazines. It is completely reorganizing and reworking the source material into an original composition. Close quote. Open parentheses, McCrimmon, page 346, close parentheses, period. The signal phrase, according to McCrimmon. The parenthetical, McCrimmon, page 346, in parentheses, period. Both examples have a signal phrase and include a parenthetical reference to guide your reader or audience to the works cited bibliography. In APA, this is called a references page. Notice that I have the authors with their names inverted. McCrimmon, comma, James M. and Strunk, Jr., comma, William. Notice that even though I referenced William Strunk, Jr. first in the presentation, James McCrimmon is listed first in the bibliography because we alphabetize our list by author's last names. So. Works cited, McCrimmon, comma, James M., period. Writing with a purpose is in italics to indicate the name of a book. I quoted from the 7th edition, published in Boston by Houghton Mifflin in 1980. I also referenced William Strunk, Jr. in his book, The Elements of Style. And again, it's the name of a book, so The Elements of Style goes in italics. Published in New York by Macmillan in 1959. As you begin to work on your research papers and begin to incorporate research materials into your writing, remember to give credit to the sources and provide signal phrases and references in text plus a full bibliographic information because that way you increase your credibility as an argumentative writer.